Hello everyone and welcome back to my Realism Overhaul series in Kerbal Space Program 1.1.2. In this episode, I have a rocket that could, in theory, go to the moon. I mean, it has the Delta V to do it. The question is whether I can actually manage this. Uh, we don't have um, patch conics unlocked yet, so it'll be a blind shot unless we unlock the tracking station. But uh, here we have an Explorer core, two goo containers, uh, we've got uh, separation motor, we've got antennas, I mean the separation motors are tilted so it spin stabilizes, the main engine is of course an XASR, uh, 1 minute and 5 seconds burn time which is its maximum, uh, but that part will be unguided as it were, uh, not uh, actively controlled, it's spin stabilized, And but I will be able to shut down the XASR when the time comes if it so happens we have some sort of moon encounter. Uh, now here we have an Able Avionics package which allows for control of up to hold on, we have to get all this uh, five tons takes 150 watts. Uh, I don't know if the 10,000 electric charge we have in the Explorer Core and here is enough. Uh, it depends on how we hit the moon if we hit the moon, right? Uh, uh, there some trajectories will get you there in two days. Some will get you there in much longer time. So that's the question. Uh, but it does have a power draw and we have to watch out for that. Oh, I didn't realize the Explore Core had a node on the top. I hope that doesn't cause any drag issues. Anyway, uh, then we have an RD0105, uh, which is a kerosene and oxygen burning engine. And that gives us a nice delta V there. Now, the limitation on here isn't its burn time. It has a rated burn time, so that's nice. It has 316 ISP, which is excellent. The limitation's actually because of the, of the core we're using, the Able Avionics package, which has the limit of 5 tons. Hmm, hold on. This doesn't seem to be shaped right now. After I change, uh, after I replace the XASR, you know, sometimes these things don't end up where you think they will. Okay, there we go. Off. Okay, so that's that stage, and uh, we also have little attitude jets burning nitrous oxide because otherwise we wouldn't be able to turn towards the prograde vector when it comes time to burn for the moon. And of course, we need to do that before separating the upper stage. Otherwise, the RD0105 does have gimbling. Uh, we do also have separation motors on that stage, I should point out. Uh, they're sort of tucked in here, so a little bit difficult to see. Uh, there they are. So we have those. Now, you'll probably already have noticed that we are over our mass limit. So one thing we're going to have to do is unlock the upgrade to the to the launch pad because right now we're limited to 40 tons I didn't think it was 40 tons before oh our, our height is a little bit too tall hmm that might be a problem because uh, the fuel tanks we can't make any wider than two uh, it doesn't show it there um, if I right click here I can't make it more than two meters in diameter so I can't make it any shorter than this uh, there's no way I could put them off to the side. These aren't tanks, by the way. These are actually structure uh, to sort of shield the engines down here. Uh, a lot like Atlas, which is what this is largely based on, because uh, we have the LR-105 here, which is the Atlas center engine, and then at the bottom we have engines similar to the booster engines of Atlas, uh, the LR-89s. So... Yes, but so now we have this problem. We don't have fuel lines, so we can't put uh, fuel tanks on the side and feed them in. So we have this issue. I guess we could make a shorter version of the Lancer, actually. Come to think of it. we uh, It's actually designed for a heavier payload than it is right now, so if we really wanted to really tight on it. Let's go to the mission control and see uh, here the, the reason I decided to do the this sort of uh, thing a lunar contract just after making orbit in the previous episode is because we have these possibilities here they give this one gives us three years four years four years that takes us a while to build the rockets I think uh, orbit we better pass on for now um, lunar flyby though is what we want but we have to below 5,000 kilometers 
It's a little bit tough, but that's what we were aiming to do, all right. I'll also pick up uh, Sounding Rocket High. I think that's a dead giveaway. And Medium. And uh, uh, Science Data from... Sp oh, we, we can only take three. Well, we'll do those three first. Now we've got some extra funds. We definitely need the launch pad upgrade. That's 75,000. And so 40 tons. Oh, the, the vessel size is launch pad, not the assembly building. So we took care of both at once. That's excellent. Now we... Maybe I should go to the tracking station and try and get patch conics. I'm not trying to be all hardcore here. I just want to get this done properly. So if we can get patch conics and make things easier on me, that would be nice. Uh, that doesn't mean mission planning. That just means I can see when I hit the moon, right? I mean, mission planning, you have to unlock that as well. Okay. Uh, oh yes, the upgrades to the launch pad and all take time. Right, right, right. How long is that going to take? And, uh, yeah, how long is that going to take? Let's just take a look at that. Come on, it's uh, barely a pit there. We, it shouldn't take that long, right? Um, 308 days. Is there any way to speed that up? We're going to get basic avionics, probably early construction, maybe even basic construction by the time that finishes. I mean, the upgrades, VAB, SPH, and R&D. It doesn't say, I don't know if R&D is tied to, um, you know, building stuff on the launch pad, I mean, building stuff on the space center. Uh, tracking station, hold on, let's, let's take a look at that. Tracking station upgrade 60,000. I think I need patched conics, but it leaves us with, uh, well, limited funding. Okay, they're both completing simultaneously, it looks like. That's good. That's a plus. It's not sequential. We can have different construction crews working. Uh, maybe I could get some upgrade points by unlocking some more science. Uh, I think we're already researching basic avionics, yeah. I wish it would continue to show what we are researching. I guess we would get... Uh, upgrade point if we unlocked supersonic flight. Oh, what? Where? Where are the big, bigger tanks? I guess the tank upgrade must be here. Oh, there's the actual Atlas fairing, the one I'm sort of imitating. Yeah, we're already unlocking this one, so we might have bigger tanks anyway. Hmm. Okay, I'm unlocking survivability and supersonic. Okay, well now it's not letting me click on supersonic flight. So let me try it out again. Back out, back in. Click on supersonic flight, research, okay. Alright, so taking a look at everything, we should have two new points. We've got a lot of stuff queued here. Uh, yeah, we've got two new points. Let's increase R&D upgrades. I hope that increases the speed that buildings get upgraded as well. Is that right? Uh, no. <laughs> no, it doesn't. Well, that's not very helpful. Okay. All right. Um, well, I guess there's nothing for us to do but wait. We could try and fulfill the some contracts first. Uh, wait, how long before we have to finish the sounding rocket ones? 326 days. So that's pretty tight. Then it is 359. Okay, uh, so what I want to do is try and launch uh, Boomer, right? We uh, haven't tried that recently, and I wanted to try one. All right, so in the interest of calming people down here, I've decided to reduce the utilization to 90% on all the stages. That actually didn't make any difference to the Delta V, or not much anyway, maybe at most a dozen meters per second. Uh, what did make a huge difference from the 10,150 that we had before to now 9,800 is I've reduced the timing on the first stage to only 40 seconds. And that's because I want a high thrust weight ratio, uh, well, at least better than what we had before. Hopefully that will allow us to remain pointed in the right direction instead of having any problems. Again, we still have that slight lean to the rocket. And I'm hoping that will eventually curve us down, but not so quickly, not as quickly as we've seen in previous attempts. Uh, it's tough to say, though. It's tough to say. So we'll see how it goes. Obviously, we don't have avionics. 
uh, 27 days to build it, 2,155 funds, so it's not cheap. But the main goal is to try and get at least to 5,200 kilometers, and uh, on, on the way you get to 360 kilometers. And if we can do that, maybe we can do some science. We've got the basic instruments at the bottom. You know, actually, uh, if I put the Explore 1 probe core, this might get further. I mean, instead of the nose cone and guidance system, right? Um, wow, that's a lot more Delta V, huh? 11,000. This is promising. We don't need the instruments at the bottom here. Let me taper this properly. Well, uh, this definitely should have changed by now. Because that should have reduced how much burn time we have there. It's not changing. I think it's it's done. It's decided it doesn't want to do this anymore. Hmm. Well, that does make things a little bit difficult. Uh, avionics has also decided it's done. Be oh, everything has decided it's done. Okay, hold on. Why is that? Because this is not a 0.4 ton rocket anymore. Okay, now, now it's better. Okay. Okay, good. Okay, we'll try this out. We'll call this Boomer 3. So again, utilization is 90 all the way through. And no, we have no guidance. Wait, uh, we have to tilt it a little bit. Okay, that's all I'm doing. The tiniest fraction of a tilt. We'll see how it works. Okay, here we go. Your guess is as good as mine. We do have SAS, by the way, technically. Not that it can do much. I mean, there's SAS. Yeah. I think I'll just leave it off. Throttle up. And it is pointed slightly. Very slightly. Let's go. Oh, it's, uh... Oh, it lost an engine. Well, if it's gonna lose an engine, that, that is going to be a problem. Yeah, engine failure. Unusually long time for the explosion, because probably because of all the engines. Okay, well, hmm, I don't know. We've got the max amount of data units on the XASR. We can't do anything too much about that. The question is whether we want to keep trying it and lose money or just hold off. We don't have unlimited funds here. I'll try and build one more. Okay, well, the game has crashed twice now. First of all, when I tried to return to the B VAB, and then the second time when I reloaded the game and tried to load the craft file for Boomer 3. So that's a problem. I went into the output log and what it said was it was just spamming a part child attached message and there was like a million lines of this thing. I'm not joking, a million lines. Uh, so that's a problem. Uh, so let me avoid Boomer 3 and see what happens when I load Boomer 2. If I can't load any craft then oh, I've updated some mods. And so I might just revert all of the mod updates that I did before starting this episode. Uh, so it doesn't really... Cr okay, well, it loads this one just fine. But it crashes when loading the other one. Hmm. And uh, is it maybe craft files that I made after a certain point? Let me see if um, the, the other one... Where is it? Not blue. Where's Lancer? There it is. Let me see if Lancer is alright. Alright, well, Lancer loads. Lancer loads. Okay, let me try... Try Boomer 3 again. And if it crashes the game, well, there's something weird about that. Well, the Boomer 3 craft file is definitely bugged. Uh, it did crash the game again, and I can't load it. 
So I decided that we would go with the Buster 3 instead anyway because the Buster 3 actually costs less than the Boomer 3. The Boomer 3 costs about 2,300, the Buster 3 costs 1,920 and it's more likely to work and we really need to fulfill those contracts and uh, get the funds from them because, uh, well, we don't want to have a bad reputation and they don't actually pay out that much so it's better to go with the cheaper rocket. So we'll go with this and hopefully it'll be more reliable. Now it does depend on whether the engines do work or not. Uh, we will see, but let me build one of these and then proceed. I've also decided to up the the supersonic flight technology. Uh, so I've put it right after basic avionics in the Kerbal construction time. And that's because I want to be able to fulfill some of these crude contracts. I mean these automatic contracts that say uh, crew count of one, altitude record of five kilometers. I think we can get a Kerbal up to five kilometers and recover them, right? And so we'll get extra funds like that. I'm a little bit worried about my fund situation is the thing. All right, so that is the current plan. And I'll see you on the launch pad with the Buster 3. Okay, here we are. And we do have guidance on this thing. So SAS on, throttle up. While we were building the Buster 3, uh, we completed basic avionics as well as supersonic flight. So we have that. Oh, why is it twitching on the throttle? That's not good. Don't do that. Okay, and I think we can trust Smart ESS, right? Right. Uh, I don't know why it's twitching on the throttle there. Hmm. All right. Uh, ignition. And launch. And hand over to Smart ESS. We don't really have to tilt that much, actually. This time, we're really just going for an altitude record of 5,000 kilometers. We probably should have put a better antenna on this, maybe? I don't know. We'll see. Gonna activate the RCS. Set. And ignition. Alright, all the engines are on. have a little bit of a roll. RCS can't correct that. We use some nitrous oxide so RCS is working. Yep. Oh, we should definitely get the altitude record. Okay. Set. And ignition. Okay, we seem to be spin stabilized. Uh, Smart ASS is not going to do anything at this point. If we want to set a speed record, we need to go 9,000 meters per second, so there's no way we're going to hit that. Just trying to get to 5,200 kilometers. That's 5,200. I mean, we haven't actually passed it yet, though. Oh, oh, we actually actually had to physically pass 360. Okay, so it wasn't bugged or anything. It's fine. And we should pass 5,200. Oh, persistent rotation. Oh, wait, uh, somebody told me that persistent rotation hasn't been updated yet. Okay. That's probably why I keep forgetting it. Because what I do is I just go on the forums and download everything. And then uh, for each, before I start, I try and update all the mods based on what I have in my folder. Anyway, um, okay, well we have fulfilled that contract. This will perish. I don't know if we can do another con uh, another uh, bit of science. I doubt it. We're still over the water and we've definitely done water before. It's pretty unique telemetry though, but doesn't count. Okay, will we get over some other continents? No, we're coming straight that back down in the Atlantic. Okay, I'll let it do its thing. I'm not going to watch it blow up. Okay, so now we can get two other contracts. Uh, we could go with Break the Sound Barrier with uh, Kerbal. It's interesting that we get this sounding rocket high and sounding rocket medium again. This is only a little bit higher than the previous one. This high one is actually lower than the previous one. 
which sort of makes no sense. I don't know why they they want to do that. They don't add any scientific instrument or anything. They just want to get to that height, but we've already done those things. So, curious thing, um, we could pick up this science data from space around Earth, but I think, uh, let me try and build something that can take care of uh, crew altitude record of 5 kilometers, speed record of 350 meters per second, and crew count of 1, and uh, if we're going to go 350 meters per second, we're going to break the sound barrier. So let's do that. We'll try and do it in a rocket. We've got 11 years to do this, so that's plenty of time. Oh wait, it says uh, greater than 350 meters per second for one minute. Is that right? Oh, well, then that's more of a plane thing. I mean, that's sustained duration. Hmm. That's not something... Yeah, for one minute with a crude craft. That's a little bit more difficult. But again, uh, we've got 11 years to take care of it. We could do it in a number of ways. But one minute is a long time. One minute is a long time. Alright, I, I don't want to take up too many, too much contract room, but I'll take it. At least it pays well. Okay, well this is curious. I just started building this thing. Uh, as usual, they offer this conic cockpit, and I can't resist uh, using it as a rocket cockpit instead of, I guess, what it's supposed to be, which is a uh, airplane cockpit. Uh, it and its goofy textures. Uh, but you can see what's happening. We have continuous um, increase in mass, which is due to something to do with this cockpit. Or, no. Yeah, it's this cockpit, all right. Something about the coating of this cockpit. Let me just get all the things out of the scene. Let's take this away. Okay. Just the cockpit. Yeah. Okay. So this is coated badly somehow. Um, you know what? I have fixed this before. There were other tanks that had this problem. Let me look at what's going on here and I'll fix it again. All right. Well, I give up. Um... I, I've tried everything that I could think of and it hasn't fixed it at all. I have tried deleting module module fuel tanks, modular fuel tanks from it. Uh, currently it has that actually deleted. Tack life support is in here adding these things and I added the resource electric charge. That didn't work. I tried deleting the resource electric charge and the resource oxygen which it comes with. Uh, that didn't work uh, that, and leaving the modular fuel tanks in. I tried changing the type of modular fuel tank from structural to fuselage. I tried adding the resources, the electric charge and oxygen to the modular fuel tank. That didn't work. It is definitely modular fuel tank that is the problem. Though right now I can't show you that because the UI isn't showing up. And the UI, um, you know, would show that what is happening is actually the mass of the tank is increasing like this. And so that's the problem. Obviously, the actual resources are not increasing, nor is the volume of the tank, by the way. The volume of the tank is not increasing. This is not just a MechJeb thing, um, though it seems to have maxed out 339.7 here. No, no, it's still increasing. It just shows it discreetly instead of... Yeah, okay. So, yeah, it's still increasing down here. So it's not just a MechJeb thing. It's an actual KSP thing. Um, yeah, so I've looked at the configurations, and the configuration for this conic cockpit is exactly the same as it was for the previous version, which worked just fine, but this is not the only instance where I've seen that problem here. I've seen that problem with other things, uh, specifically the SSTU tanks, but the problem with the SSTU tanks was that, um... The problem with the SS2 tanks was that there were actually two tanks there. And uh, it had a weird way of splitting up the tanks, which led one of the, tank to, one of the tanks to keep getting added to the whole thing. Um, I don't know how this is happening. I mean, the, what we see with the Conic Cockpit is happening. I hope it doesn't ha happen with all the pods. I mean, if it's not the root part... Oh, that's interesting. Okay, so if it's not the root part... It doesn't happen. Okay. 
let me restore it back to what it uh, was before by default because uh, right now it doesn't have modular fuel tanks in and it's not what it was before let me restore it to what it was before and I'll just make it not the root part and then hopefully it'll work out maybe kind of hopefully cross your fingers all right all right so here we go we are going to try and send a Kerbal up in this dart and that's that's basically what it is it's uh, not the most impressive sort of thing but very convincing as far as just launching a Kerbal up goes uh, we're using an AJ-10 upper stage engine it's called an upper stage engine uh, though in this case it happens to have a relatively decent uh, sea level ISP and it's cheap and it doesn't have that much thrust and since we've only got a two ton vessel it's hard to pick any other engine out of here uh, that would be safe so uh, limited amount of thrust was fine for this purpose you can see the fins that are hopefully there to keep us pointed up though not in a position where they're going to uh, cause us to dart into the ground that's something I'm worried about but uh, hopefully we're, we're not gonna go very fast initially we're just trying to break the speed of sound first and uh, capture that contract and uh, at that speed I think our drogue chutes and I've got both drogue chutes and main chutes on here will still function so that should be okay we will see alright well there's only one Kerbal that could be up for this thing and that is Jeb alright let's try it well okay well let's build it first and then we actually have to assign Jeb to it uh oh oh no here I was all set to go and then it suddenly started oh, okay so this bug alright well so putting Jeb in started that it must be attack life support thing and I know uh, uh, looking in the configuration they tried to add the modular fuel tank to get around the attack life support bug apparently the new attack life support has issues with that and it's not quite working out so if I try and put Jeb in it starts the whole cycle again I don't think we can use this cockpit like this. I hope it's not a problem with other command pods, but I was so close to launching this thing, but it looks like we can't. I'll have to figure that problem out. Obviously we can't because uh, it'll uh, immediately go past the mass limit and we can't even bring it out. I think, I mean, unless on the uh, if we build it, actually I think I might have already assigned one to be built. We'll see, uh, maybe it won't be so heavy yeah clearly there's some issue though boomer 3 can't be blamed on okay so now it's the right mass I just won't put Jeb in I'll just tell it to build it should be fine we've got one building and we'll see if we can launch it like that yeah boomer 3 couldn't be blamed on tack life support so what was that all about just a corrupt craft file maybe Okay, so uh, let's work to complete there. As far as our launch pad, which is what we're waiting for to launch the Lancer, we've got 242 days left for that. We are waiting on, I mean, we've got early construction coming up, which will hopefully allow us to build wider rockets than two meters. That's a limitation we have right now. There's also the tracking station upgrade, which will be complete before the launch pad. Okay, so Dart. Okay, so Jeb Kerman is in there. Launch. Let's see. Ah, uh, yeah, it's a bug. Look, the vessel mass is going up and up and up. Nope, we can't launch this. The total delta V is going down dramatically. Wonder what happens if we try and launch it. Uh, we could potentially fulfill something or another right uh -oh, okay I don't know maybe at least we could test the engine oh that was a bad idea oh no how fast did he fall to the ground wow Nuts! I didn't think he would fall that fast. How did he fall that fast? 
Really? Did I just lose Jeb again? I just lost Jeb again. Highest speed achieved 408 meters per second? You can't accelerate to 408 meters per second in that distance. I mean, maybe you'd be going pretty fast. And maybe it wouldn't be safe, I don't know. There was an engine that was supposed to slow us down from 1G, but I guess maybe it was too heavy by then. Well, this is a sad day. Predictable, but still sad. Oh, well, that was a silly bug. I guess... Yeah, so we can't use that pod, so we're probably going to fail to break us. Well, no, we've got 11 years for that. Yeah. All right. Um, okay, enough with crude things. Uh, obviously, we are not ready to do anything with Kerbals in. Poor Jeb. Um, we can build a Lancer in preparation for having everything unlocked. Might as well get that uh, going. I don't get it. I mean, here it's all fine. And then if we put anybody into the pod... Oh, we can't even put somebody into the pod right now. Well, that's smart. Look, uh, right now it has uh, parts of crew capacity. There's no part with crew capacity here. That's interesting. Should have done that to me last time. That uh, saved Jeb. Well, that and other things could have saved Jeb too, but... Let's not talk about who killed who. Alright, so here's the Lancer, and the Lancer is above our limits right now, but we're going to launch it after that gets unlocked, the new building gets unlocked, so we're just going to build it while we're waiting. Uh, acknowledged, yes, that's fine. Okay. And incidentally, it really shouldn't have allowed me to launch Jeb, right? I mean, we were over the mass limit by the time I launched him, weren't we? Why didn't it stop me from launch launching him if uh, he was just going to come crashing into the ground, right? Right? Because then he'd be over 40 tons. Many issues with what happened to Jeb there. Alright, well we've built the Lancer. But now I have the question. I mean, obviously we don't have the launch pad upgraded. Now I have the question, will it stop me? Oh, maybe it'll stop me from rolling it out. But when I rolled out the other one, we... Uh, we were actually under the limit, right? We were 2.7 tons. It only started increasing in mass when we reached the launch pad. Yeah, okay, so it stops me from rolling it out. But uh, since the size increase occurred on the launch pad, it didn't stop me there. That's why. That's why uh, we did not get saved from our folly with Jeb. Looks like basic construction will also be done by the time we get the launch pad finished. We could probably build a very different rocket than this Lancer with all this new technology. Okay, here we go. We should be able to roll it out now. Yes, we can. Though it takes two days to do it. It's quite a long time. Do all rockets take two days to roll out? I mean, on this at this size level. All right, I guess we can try and launch it. We're not particularly in line with the moon. We're gonna, I guess, try an off-plane transfer. We don't have maneuver nodes either. Don't forget, so we can't really plan a maneuver. But since there's a new rocket, just getting into orbit would be somewhat of a victory. Okay, here we are, the Lancer. It doesn't have any mass issues, but will it work? I have no idea. Ignition. Okay, looks good. Launch. Okay, we've got another problem here. There's no launch clamps holding it. Acceleration is 1.5 G's. But we're not getting off the ground. I've seen this before too. But what was the cause of it? There was the launch clamps. I used different launch clamps to solve this problem. Uh, 
this is not gonna go well for us. <laughs> We're gonna lose this money, yeah? It's sort of rising slightly, isn't it? But I don't know if it's gonna break free suddenly of the constraints that are sort of keeping it tied. I don't think so. You upgrade some mods and then everything goes to who knows what. So yeah, realism overhaul, everything that I know of has been updated to the latest versions, as far as I know. The second stage engine might have enough thrust after these are out. But I don't know how long we'll have. I don't know if it'll work or not. I guess we might as well find out, huh? Let's take a look at my reaction time. Okay, we've obviously dumped the first stage and... You know, it's an interesting thing. This doesn't have a thrust weight ratio of 1 right now. And that's because it's a vacuum engine. Uh, so it'd have higher thrust where it actually should be lit. But at this acceleration, it should be crashing into the ground, but it's not. Something is holding it up. So it's not crashing. <laughs> By the way, the first stage dropped about the same distance Jeb did, and it looks fine. I think it lost the engine, but otherwise it's fine. Sucks, doesn't it? So I don't know what to do. I mean, uh, maybe we can recover these things. Of course, this stage could come crashing down and destroy the one at the bottom there. wonder if I could switch to the bottom one and recover it. wonder if I could recover this right now. Recover vessel. <laughs> well, I don't know. Did you have a better idea? Okay, well, there's still a... Uh, that, that probe that's still firing away, isn't it? Let's see. I don't know if we got funds. I think we got some funds back for that. I don't know for sure, though. There's some generalized bugginess all over the place here. Yep. I'll let that be a lesson to you. Don't upgrade mods. <laughs> In, uh... Yeah, something's gone wrong. Oh, wait. Which one did I recover, then? Vessel. I thought I recovered this part, not the other part. Okay, well, uh, recovery of vessel that survived the flight. Well, I, I can say that we've done some scientific research on a very interesting phenomenon, that's for sure. Okay. The launch pad is clear, apparently. Uh, let me change which launch clamps I'm using. If I recall, the faster launch clamps work better. Uh-oh, now I can't click on the VAB. And there are no VAB buttons on the side. And, well, uh, that works. Okay, uh, I'll get out of the save and come back in and hope everything's alright. Okay, guys, I can no longer click on any building. I, I, I exited the save and came back in. And the v buildings are not clickable at all, any of them. These buttons work. This is all fine. It's the buildings we can't access. And there are no little building icons on the side here. Let me try and restart the game, but if that doesn't work, I think I've uh, encountered enough bugs that I'm going to have to reassess where to go from here and maybe revert some of those updates that I did. We'll see. Okay, I just restarted and re-entered the save and it looks like things are clickable. So let's try again. Let's try the Lancer one more time this time with different clamps, but uh, I don't want to run out of time on this thing. Uh, uh, we did recover the funds at least, that was nice. Don't ask me how, don't ask me how. This is all very, very weird to me. Okay, uh, so not these clamps. Let's have, uh, let's have these, these Apollo ones. Now, I don't think these, these don't have fuel feeding, they don't have a, pump. 
So we'll have to remember that. We'll have to get off the ground in a hurry kind of thing. Okay, here we are in the launch pad. And as I said, we should probably get on with it ASAP. SAS is on. Throttle is up. Yep. Ignition. And launch. Oh, it's going up. Well, okay, so we'll use these launch clamps. We're probably at a pretty bad inclination with respect to the moon. But again, we'll just do an off-plane transfer, handing it off to Smart ASS, hoping it's not going to wiggle too much. But I think Smart ASS at least is working. We are going through the region of maximum dynamic pressure here. I better hold it at 50. Still a bit high in the pitch, but let's hold it here, set. And ignition. Oh, it took a little bit of time for that one to ignite, but we've got it ignited. Very good. It's got gimbling. That should be alright. We've got good acceleration, as you can see. 1.3 Gs. This stage does not take very long. The next stage... 3 minutes and 41 seconds, starting at 1G. So we could pitch up a little bit more to give our time to Apoapsis a bit of a buffer. Yeah, we've got plenty of fuel actually. I think this has got to be fine. Uh, this was configured to lift a heavier payload to orbit after all. Actually, I was thinking of putting a capsule on top of this. We'll see. How far off from the moon are we? Probably pretty far, like I said. Let's see. It says target 32.55 degrees. Alright, separation. Ignition. All is well. RD0105. Let's try saying that as target again. Just try to correct a bit of the relative inclination while I can. We happen to be relatively close to the descending node there, so... Actually, that'll make uh, tr uh, off-plane transfer very easy. Once we get to the descending node, we'll burn for the moon, so it won't take too much time. Communication is an issue. Right now, we seem to have multiple points to work with. Once we get really far over the Atlantic, though, that's more of a problem. I imagine this Bermuda will stretch to about here. So we should stage and start the burn at most there. Uh, we've got the other antennas on, antennae on here, but they're tucked away in this fairing right now. Somewhere. Uh, I wonder if I can see them. Oh, uh, there they are. So, you know, let me... Oh, I can't deploy them while they're inside the fairing. So, yeah. I'll just have to wait. But the rocket has performed excellently. Uh, this is an excellent rocket to loft payloads into orbit. And I think its capacity might be... Capacity might be around a ton. Maybe more. Okay, we're about to make orbit, but our apoapsis time is getting out of hand here. Okay, here we go, getting ready for engine shutdown, and shutdown. 261 by 208. Center and 48 meters per second left, vessel mass 1.8 tons. So very good. Okay, so now like I said, we're going to time up a little bit and then start the process. That's our spent stage, I guess? Yeah. Of trying to get to the moon, but... The likelihood that we will actually get to the moon is low. We are going to say orbit prograde. We're going to turn on the RCS. Got to wait for it to stabilize. And then the next stage has been stabilized, right? And then we will not have any control because the controller's on this stage. 
We didn't need much nitrous oxide. We could do with nitrous oxide thrusters on the next stage. I don't think I thought of putting them on. Oh, I probably thought of putting them on, but decided not to because of mass. Okay. Well, we are lined up. We're probably going to lose communication soon. I guess... Well, we should target the moon again. I guess we better get going. Yep. Okay. Throttling up. Separation. Oh, crud. Too much of a kick. We... I I'm trying it anyway. We're obviously not pointed right. I don't know, maybe the antenna, antenna gave us a kick because it was extending. I don't know. But I have to pay attention here. You can see what I'm doing. I'm trying to hit the moon at that at that node right there. Because we've got uh, the high relative inclination. And I'll try and shut it down when the time comes. Though it's going to be touchy because, you know, 15 seconds and most of it's going to come right at the end. Ah, uh, not far enough. But, Earth apoapsis 107,000 kilometers means that we should get high over the Earth. And our periapsis is not... So this is actually a permanent satellite now. Uh, uh, I should have action groups the, the stuff. Okay. Um, well, I guess we haven't done this before. No, no, no. Review data. Oh, no connection. I see. Okay. Yeah, I definitely should have action group stuff. But actually, without persistent rotation, when I time warp, it's going to stop rotating. We'll wait for us to reacquire. Oh, we have. Okay. Let me extend all the other antennae. Since the Explorer core doesn't take too much electricity... This probe will probably last quite a while. It's only drawing 0.01 per second. Okay, review data. Transmit. Of course, transmitting data takes a bit. But not that much. Okay, we're definitely high over the Earth now. Let's do another goo container. Okay, 2.5. A developmental wing abnormality appearing in adult flower beetles. Uh, Tribolium confusum? Confusum, yeah. Following pupil irradiation was increased to 44.8% in flight compared to control of 29.9%. Fascinating. Transmit. Okay, analyze telemetry. This is the real science here. I mean, well, at least we don't seem to get much science points for that information about the flower beetles. We get a lot more for this data and that seems to be like more than 24 right yeah we have 29.1 total now that's that's excellent okay well that's all the science I don't think yeah it's just high over so it's not like we're you know dependent on the surface biomes so that's what this has done but we did not get a flyby of the moon was it because I tried to extend the antenna and that threw things off or was it for some other reason? Hmm. Was the separation flawed in another way? We were pretty pretty in line with prograde. I didn't think that the thrusters were still firing. Don't know. Okay, well at least we got something done in this episode with all the other bugs involved and the tragedy of Jeb. We'll count this at least as a success, but we need to do some more work and I need to review what might have happened with uh, with those tanks on that iconic cockpit. But for now, I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did enjoy this episode, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.